about the little things. What about the mother of that little boy? Did she have any idea when she was making those loaves and packing his lunch what was going to happen to it? Was she the, the more of the kind? I have to wonder because it was a young boy and if they're like my kids, they take off the house and they forget to take anything with them and shortly after they're hungry and thirsty. So was she the, the Martha kind of mother who, who had the juice patches in her, in her knapsack and the, and the goldfish crackers and the animal crackers and all of the food because she sent her little boy with five loaves and two fish? Did she have any idea that she was going to be the one to make the feed food to feed the multitudes? And then there's the young boy who just happened to be the one walking past Andrew. And Andrew snatched him up and said, we have five loans. Now, I don't know about you, but I think about the young boy. And I think, was he all that excited that Andrew grabbed him and said, hey, we've got bread? <laughs> He's like, most kids, no, that's mine. Yet he was willing to share. And itself, that's a couple miracles right there. Another is the fact that all these people came and they sat on the hillside. And this is the one of the only two things in the Bible that are mentioned in all four Gospels. The resurrection being the first, and the feeding of the 5,000 being the second. Now, depending on which Gospel you read, uh, it tells them a little differently. John is the only one who mentions young boy as being the one that provided the food. But in the other ones, Jesus actually talks to the people. Now, as I sat there in the middle of 5,000 people, the only way we could hear the gal who was preaching that night was because of the $10,000 PA system and the gigantic speakers that projected it all the way up to the top. And yet here's a man who stands at the bottom of the hill and he teaches to the multitudes and they can hear him. Grab your mind around that one too. That is yet another miracle. And then he takes the bread. Now, I know when I grew up, a lot of it was, well, because they'd come from a far place and they were hungry and that's why he fed them. That's part of it. But the real reason why Jesus took this opportunity was to make this a pivotal point in his ministry. I don't know if you caught the part in the scripture where it says, and the Passover feast was near. This is the precursor right before Jesus is ready to go into Israel to ride triumphantly in in the Last Supper. So he takes the bread it's going to be the physical representation of feeding. And he blesses it. And he breaks it. And he multiplies it. Now, if you notice in the scriptures, it says that they didn't just get a bite. It says that they ate until they were full. And then he did the same with the fish. Now, we know that there's over 5,000 guys. I know they give you a lot. <laughs> so think how much food was produced. And then it said, after they were done eating, Jesus makes a pointed statement. He says, now I want you to go and I want you to collect everything that is left over. Let none be lost. So that none of it is wasted. This is made another reason. There's another correlation. They pick up 12 baskets full that represent the 12 tribes of Israel. As I read that, I thought about another scripture verse that came to mind. Let none be lost. Jesus tells the parable of the 99 sheep and the one that was lost. The one that the shepherd left the 99 in safekeeping and he sought out and found and brought it back into the fold. Jesus is showing a much bigger picture here. He's talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. He's talking about why he came to earth and it was to save the lost. It was to feed the people, not physically, but spiritually. <coughs> Jesus is getting ready to make the transition from being 
throat. He will become the bread of life. It only takes one. How many times have you found yourself, if you put in an opportunity, where you had the chance to be that one? It could be giving, it could be feeding somebody, it could be clothing somebody, maybe it was something else. Maybe <laughs> you found yourself just at the right place in time when God put someone right in front of you who desperately needed something that you could give. Maybe it was prayer. Maybe it was a hobby. Maybe it was words of encouragement. Maybe it was a fresh perspective. How many times did we miss that opportunity because we think, I have nothing to offer. I am so inadequate. You want me to pray with you? I don't even know how to pray myself. Or I'm too busy. Or you know what? I I, I go to a church down the road. They help people. God gives us so many opportunities. A lot of times we're just too blind to recognize it. I started doing this about five years ago. I started praying, Lord. Put the people in my path that you want me to see today. Keep those that I'm not supposed to away. And I ask you every day to open my eyes to those opportunities because we don't want to miss those. Think about that little boy. What if, what if his mom had thought, oh, there'll be other relatives there. You can grab some lunch off of them. But what if that little boy had decided to take a different way to the hillside? would not have had the blessings of having his lunch for the multitude. Well, I'm not going to leave it here because Jesus takes it much further. He goes now from the representation of the bread and filling their tongues to flee. This is after he'd done this, the multitude gathered around him because they wanted to make him king. They knew that something was going on. He was way more than just a mere man. Jesus knew it wasn't his time yet. It's coming. But he escapes. And it's after he's gone to the other side of the hillside that he's talking to his disciples. And he says, I tell you the truth. These people are looking for me. Not because they saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and you had your fill. But do not work for food that spoils, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him, God the Father has placed the seal of approval. It's still worth getting it. This comes right after Peter has just proclaimed it. We talked about this last week. You are the Son of God. They're still having trouble internalizing it. And then Jesus goes on to say the most profound things. This is the moment when things shift. He says, I tell you the truth. It is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, from now on, give us this bread. And then Jesus declares, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never thirsty. But as I have told you, I have seen, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me will, I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is his will. That I shall lose none of all Father's will. 
will is is everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life. And I will raise him up on that last day. My friends, as Jesus is getting ready to go to the Passover feast, he knows full well that he is now going to become the bread of life. That it will be his body that is broken for We look at this hindsight 2,000 years later. We are called to be the one. Not to just be the one to grab the bread and to feed those who are hungry. Well, we do need to fill their tummies. We are called to be the one to share the bread of life that they will never hunger for again. We are called to be the one to show them Jesus, to teach them about the Christ, so they will never thirst anymore. We are called to be his hands and feet and to go out and to seek the lost so that way none will be lost. Jesus died and rose again to bridge that gap between us and the Father so that way we can have everlasting life. And we are called to be the one to make sure that everyone hears 